Hope everyone had a good holiday. Yeah, I enjoyed my time too, but it's always, I am a creature of habit. And so I truly enjoy kind of having some routine in my schedule and having that habit of the daily kind of expectation of like what it is to do. But I, I really enjoyed my time to get caught up on some stuff around the house and spend a lot more time with family and, and all of that kind of thing. All righty. I'm going to give it just a couple more minutes and then we'll get started. Um, All right, Bridget's at a doctor's appointment with her mom. So she's on and muted. And then another um, person had messaged me that they would be on too with their, their camera off. So I'll be checking the chat to make sure if anyone has um, said anything. Uh, we'll do one more minute. So um, we are in the last week of our opening. So um, some people might be hopping in to just kind of listen in and hear how we do things. So some of the ways that we do the, um, the coaching program, um, we, everyone starts with a, uh, the, the free getting started. It's a five day class um, to kind of help you understand how to do things. And you are welcome to take that and just keep doing that on your own and take that however you want. Um, I offer a monthly Zoom just like this is, and it's open to the public so that you can um, kind of stay excited about what you're doing, get some information. Um, I try to always do uh, something relevant to the times of what's going on or what's relevant to the coaching that I'm doing on the, with the one-on-one -on -one people, like what they maybe need to hear. And so um, you're welcome to do that on your own. If you would like a little more accountability, oh, it's actually a lot of accountability. <laughs> it's not a little, is it? And so um, if you would like more accountability, then um, the one-on-one -on -one coaching is really great. And so with the one-on-one -on -one coaching, um, you meet with me weekly. And it's like a 30 minute, 20 to 30 minute session weekly. We coach on whatever is going on for you. Or if you don't have anything that you're aware of, I always seem to have tons of questions for people and get them to tell me about what's going on and find something that we can talk about and explore. And so the idea with the one-on-one -on -one coaching is that we can develop habits that make everything so much easier for you. And then, um, Lana, I was trying to determine if you were stifling like a laugh about something I said, or if that was a yawn, but I think that was a yawn. <laughs> so what I was saying was I try to make it so much easier for you so that you have these habits that you can develop that uh, make it something you can do on your own. And so um, kind of empower you, put you in control of some things. And then with the coaching program. So you get me one-on-one -on -one once a week, but then you also have access to one of these type of calls where it's a weekly topic that changes out each time. And with that weekly topic, then we also have some coaching available at the end or something and that you get weekly. So a weekly group and a weekly one-on-one. -on -one. And then what else? Oh, and then for the first three months, you have a weekly email that has lessons, worksheets, that kind of stuff. And so as you learn to develop habits and manage your thoughts and your mind about that kind of thing, that's what that program is going to be in place for. So you might not need it at the moment you learn it, but it's set up so that over the course of three months that you get some experience with all of those coaching concepts and how the, the thoughts work, how the mind works kind of thing. Um, and sometimes you take some of that to your one-on-one -on -one coaching. Sometimes we talk about just whatever's going on in your life. So that is kind of how that works. When you are completed with a three-month program, you are definitely um, plenty of stuff to stay with it. And then you come to the weekly coachings. We still do one-on-one -on -one coaching, um, that kind of thing. So there's, there's so much more. We have a Slack channel, which is kind of like our own private text messaging group. And so I post things in there. Sometimes people do really well if they have the accountability of giving me their weekly plan. And so that kind of thing we do. So, okay, I am going to turn off 
the cameras. I think I'm going to turn off the cameras. I practiced this so that I could do this. All right. Yes, I'm going to stop the videos. There we go. And then we're going to go ahead and watch um, a quick video. And then we'll come back on and talk about it together. Keeping the celebration going. For most of us, we have just finished Christmas and we are getting ready for New Year's Eve and the new year. How did you eat during the holidays? Was it an ongoing smorgasbord? <laughs> Was it an excuse to eat anything and everything? Did you plan and assess every day? Did you plan for those extras or some call them exception or joy foods or meals? How do you think about the holiday season, how it went? Did you have thoughts that you earned this or the holidays are for pigging out or having extra sweets and alcohol? How does this leave you feeling? Ashamed, guilty, discouraged? Maybe you treated the holidays like it was just any other day. You planned, you assessed, and you feel proud and encouraged, maybe even empowered. Motivated to start the year in full swing, already having lost uh, weight in these last couple of months. I'd venture to say most of us are not at one end or the other. We have eaten a little differently or a little more than we do outside of the holidays. Maybe we have not been doing all the worksheets, just some, sometimes. Wherever you land on the scale of not doing a thing or all in, now is a great time to assess how it all went down and how you may like to do it differently next year. Think about all the holiday events. Was there anything that stands out to you? Was there a specific food you had a hard time around, an event that you could have planned to eat, enjoy, and stay on plan if only you had written your plan a little more realistically? Remember, planning is there to let you succeed. There is no all or nothing, good or bad. If you want to eat something, put it on your plan. Maybe you know you want dessert, but you don't know what kind will be offered. You simply write dessert or a bite of each dessert that I want to try. That way you don't show up with your daily plan, you know, a picture of perfection only to throw it out as soon as you see the dessert table. Or in not wanting to have to admit to yourself that you ate off plan or ate too much, you decide not to have a plan or assess to not have to endure your own judgment and beat down. So just don't even make the plan at all, right? Maybe even in lieu of a plan, you used it as an excuse to eat all there is before you have to be good again and go back to daily planning. If any of this sounds like it looks even a, a glimpse of what any part of your holiday looks like, take the time to make a protocol for next time. What might come up, whether it is next year or sooner? Generally, these ideas are not exclusive to Thanksgiving and Christmas. They are habits and thoughts that come out whenever they are triggered. Now think about the entire year, not just these last couple of months. What do you think went well this year? What are you proud of? Where do you think you could make some little changes? Is there anything you want to put a little more attention to? What are you still trying to figure out? Write down what went well, what didn't, and what you want to try next year. Make sure that you start with what you did well, and then look curiously at what didn't. This is not another opportunity to judge yourself. It is a place scientifically from curiosity to really find little places to go forward and make some little changes, just some little tweaks. Now take the list of what you would like to focus on for the next year. Why is that important to you? What would happen if you accomplished these things? What would happen if you didn't? It is equally important to know why you want something and what you are giving up or saying no to when you don't do those things. How can you figure out how to make these things easier to do next year? What about your thoughts? Could you be thinking anything that could really create motivating feelings to get you to do it? Then can you plan actually like, Put it on paper or a calendar, what you're going to do and focus on. 
going into the new year, is there a thought or a word that could guide you? My sentence this year has been, I am willing and capable of all things. My word of the year has been fierce. What thought or word can carry you through the next year with inspiration and motivation? So many this time of year are keeping the celebration going in their mouths and their stomachs only to be awakened with a new year's resolution vowing to do it all differently you can enter this new year before any of the promise making with a direction you want to go you and your kindest most loving way possible can set your direction and plan for success in a doable little easy to succeed way that will start your new year with no reasons to make resolutions that are made out of guilt and shame All righty. All right. If anyone else would like to start their mic, their audio, they're welcome to now. And then I have some questions that we will go over. Was there anything that anybody Pat, let me get the chat back up since I know there's a couple of you in the chat. There we go. So I know a couple of uh, um, things kind of came up in there. We talked a little bit about like the end of the year and how the holidays went. We talked about the whole year. So it's a really great time to kind of just assess how everything went and then set some atten intention, not attention, give yourself some attention for the intention of next year. So with that, was there anything that anybody noticed was something that jumped out at them? All right. I have no chats. Okay. How did everyone's holiday go? That's, that's probably my first question. Yes. Hey, this is Bridget. So hey. I finally just made it out to the car. Okay. And uh, so uh, you're talking about um, over the holidays, some of the challenges. Yeah. So um, I was actually kind of proud of myself because I tried to follow your hunger scale mm -hmm. and uh, just kind of eat when I was hungry. Um, so I did good to start off with by not getting seconds and things like that. Um, so that was kind of one of the wins, I guess, that I was proud of about myself because I'm a big one on getting seconds and thirds and eating all day long on a holiday. So you said, I am a big one on that. And so yes. anytime you say I am statements, and I know you're getting started in the program. So um, this is uh, something that we kind of go over, I think in the second or third video, I'm not sure which video it is, but we talk about I am statements. And so the planner has a whole I am section. And it's so important to have that I am statement because your brain is going to believe whatever you say after I am. And so if you say I am worthless, your brain remembers that and it thinks that. And so if you say I am big on seconds, then your brain's going to say, yep, that's her identity. That's who she is. Uh -huh. And so I used to be big on seconds. I previously had seconds. I am working on not having seconds. I'm working on my hunger scale. All those things will tell your brain who you are and um, have it be a, a thing that motivates you or um, kind of encourages like the behaviors that you want. Okay, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. So, um, why did you not have seconds this year? What was different? Um, I think just really starting and envision a goal for myself, you know, a year from now, how I can look mm -hmm. and improving my health and just, and I guess, envisioning a different Bridget. So that really started to get me motivated. And of course, okay. you know, at the end of year, going into new year, you know, you always have these goals. Uh, we make these new year's resolutions, but this is something that I want to be more than a new year's resolution. 
So yes. I was I was actually going to start January, but I said, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and start, I'm going to start the hardest week. I'm going to start the week of Christmas. So I actually started filling out the planners last week um, and, and starting the paperwork to see how I would do. So how did it feel? Did it feel hard? Yeah, it, it was hard because, for example, for Christmas, somebody got me a box of cordial, cordial cherries, like a mm -hmm. huge you know, and candy and all this kind of stuff. So I was tempted to eat that. And then of course, you know, everybody else is eating and, but uh, I actually ended up taking the box of candy to work and giving it to my coworkers. Okay. So um, I was able to resist some of the temptations. So was it, did it feel hard to resist or? Oh yeah. Did it just it, feel it, different? It, it, it's, it's, it felt hard. It was a struggle. Okay. Um, so in some of your coaching, is um, we'll, we'll begin as we start doing more of the one-on-one -on -one coaching, we will work through some of those feelings because your feeling that it was hard is created by a thought that it was hard or a thought that it shouldn't have to be like that or um, that you have to do it a certain way. And so in the one-on-one -on -one coaching, we'll definitely deal with um, some of those thoughts and, and um, I, I guess clean them up is maybe the best way to say that. And okay. so find out how your thoughts are kind of sabotaging you find out how your thoughts can be useful for you too. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, what, uh, did anyone notice were areas that you wanted to show up the way you wanted? So you said that you did not want to have seconds and that you didn't want to eat the candies this year. So that was definitely how maybe you showed up. Um, so like what else in the holidays, did anybody notice that it was an area that they showed up the way they wanted to? Okay. So with myself, um, some of you, I, I was pretty open about this. So I had lost over 62 pounds, uh, 62 pounds. I think I always say over 60. So I'd lost 62 pounds and then I started this weight loss business and I gained, was it 15 or 17 pounds? And so I did a whole video on it and shared my story with everybody the big fraud, right? I'm teaching you all how to lose weight and here I gain all the weight. And so uh, as I kind of did my year end review, what I was looking at wasn't so much all the places that I didn't do something, but the places that I did do something. And so instead of focusing on all the times I didn't write a plan, I was looking at when I did write a plan, almost every single time I never over ate and I never ate off plan. When I didn't write a plan, those were the times I did. So instead of like focusing on not doing something or what I did wrong, I'm focusing on, okay, this went well. And so something is in there. And so as I develop my thoughts about that, I'm like, oh, I want to do more of that. So like I, I have a, well, and I, I don't think I've used this word with any of you guys yet. And sometimes they call them a big ass action, or sometimes it's called a massive action, either one that you prefer. And so my massive action for uh, 2022, it, it's not a resolution. It's just the actions I'm going to take because I see what went so well this year. And so my plan is to have 365 days of a plan and I'm not putting any kind of restriction on myself. It might look like a sticky note. It might look like a cocktail napkin or a hotel napkin. And it might be a text to myself because I have this wonderful chain of text messages where I text myself things. And um, so just setting that intention. So um, I noticed that I showed up when I wrote my plans, I showed up so much better with that intention. And sometimes my plans, like I, I've talked to um, the coaching person this morning or an, a little bit ago, and we were talking about vagueness of plan versus um, specifics. And sometimes my plan that I wrote on paper just said, I'm not overeating and, um, or I'm not having dessert and I'm not overeating, or I am having a dessert and I'm not overeating. And so it doesn't even have to be so specific. Like it's whatever works for you. Some people definitely need the specifics and some people are okay with some of the, um, just whatever the intention is, but setting those intentions for myself, it, it was really amazing how I could show up for myself. So, um, 
I I've got probably about half of the weight back off again. And, um, that is great to me. So it's, I'm never quitting. So it'll just be whenever it does. Did anyone else have anything they wanted to share with how they showed up the way they wanted this year? Okay. Um, and Bridget, you might want to chime in on this one. So like, is there anything next Christmas, like next, how, uh, not Halloween, we're, we're jumping crazy here, Thanksgiving or Christmas that you would want to do different. So whatever you've experienced this year and you know what worked, what, what was maybe felt hard or what didn't work, um, how would you want to do something different next year, knowing what you know exactly right now? Well, one of the things I want to do for next year is really get into more of the healthy eating. So I think I would like to, like next Thanksgiving, fix a type of dinner that's not the traditional, something different that would be more healthier um, for not only the weight loss, but for, um, you know, my health too. Sure. And just trying sure. to change my, my food cravings, you know, uh, mm -hmm. from one type of food to enjoying another type of food. What do you, what is your traditional? Cause there's not a good or a bad food. I don't ever tell you there's a good or a bad food. Um, right. you'll figure out what serves you and what doesn't. So, um, I'm wondering what is more of your traditional and what would it look like to maybe be different? So, I mean, traditional meal would be, you know, uh, the turkey, I think is healthy, but all, a lot of the side, the, you know, the big things that you get, like the mashed potatoes, the gravy, the macaroni, cheese, the rolls, um, candied yams, all these types of things. So which do you I have a problem them. with carbohydrates? I do. I love anything, pasta, potatoes. Okay. I mean, I don't go more to, I'm not like a sweet eater. I don't go towards like the, the sugar stuff. I go more towards like the whole foods. Okay. rice, pastas, those types of things. I okay. love Italian food. So what would, um, like cleaning that up a little bit, improving it nutritionally or however it is that you're envisioning, what would that look like next year? I guess uh, more healthy vegetables. I mean, I, I think green beans are healthy, but, uh, low salt, um, maybe, uh, you know, a baked potato instead of mashed potatoes and gravy. Okay. Uh, just try to incorporate some more healthy foods, healthier uh, cooking, I guess. Okay. Would be the word. Yeah. Um, and so there's nothing wrong with mashed potatoes or rolls or mac and cheese or any of that kind of thing. Um, you're going to watch how much you eat. So that hunger scale, everywhere you go, you have your stomach. Everywhere you go, you know whether you're hungry or not. So um, you will always have that. And so if mashed potatoes and mac and cheese are something that you want to put on your plan, I would rather you put those on your plan and learn how to eat them in a way that you still show up for yourself. So you might decide that you're going to overeat on mac and cheese, but you made the decision to overeat on mac and cheese, or you might decide that the goal today is just as important than the day is, and that you're not going to overeat on mac and cheese, but you're going to enjoy some of it. Or like you said, you might have a decision that maybe broccoli is going to be on the plan or a baked potato instead of, instead of the other items. And so there's not a wrong way to do this. It's just you making a decision and seeing how the result happens. Like, did you come out the other side feeling okay with how things happened? Like what, it's just more of an assessment is what we're doing right now. So it's really important to not judge yourself or judge your food, but just kind of seeing like what that result is in your body. And so like, if you feel bloated after you've had a meal, well, did you have too much of the meal? Did you have too much of a certain item or maybe certain items don't feel so good in your body? And so, um, the food response log, I think is what it's called. And so like writing down, like how your body feels with certain foods, but, um, I want to make sure that you're not judging certain foods and that if they're, um, usually what I say is if you can see yourself standing at whatever your goal weight is, okay. However, in the future it is, you're standing there. Can you envision yourself never eating mac and cheese again? Answer no. that one. Okay. <laughs> no. Okay. That's so an then, honest answer. Right. So then you need to learn how to right now, as you're losing weight, 
learn how to incorporate mac and cheese in a way that you can still be eating it standing at your goal weight completely where it's going to be at. And so your playground is always going to be the frequency of the food, the quantity of the food and the quality of the food. And so sometimes it might not be mac and cheese. Sometimes it might be less mac and cheese, and sometimes it might be mac and cheese, not as often. And those are going to be your playground area. And so, um, but like, that's always going to be the gauge for me. If you can picture yourself standing at goal weight, no longer eating that, then great. Take it off your menu. I don't care. But if you're going to be there, you're going to decide, are you going to eat this? And how can you eat it? I always think of the drinking commercial. How can you eat this responsibly? <laughs> That's good. All right. So last question. Um, does anyone have a word that comes out that like sets an intention for 2022 that they're thinking about using a, a sentence, a phrase, or a word? Anything feel like it's um, motivating that it's like, that's my word. Well, if I can chime in again, I guess for me, a word that comes to my head is out confidence. I want confidence. the feeling of confidence. I want to feel confident. I like that word. What about you, Lane? I saw you getting ready to talk. I was just going to say, I can do all things. I can do whatever I want. <laughs> I, I sometimes do things to please others. And so I don't have to please others. I just need to please myself. So I can do all things. I can do all things that I want. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have had a great deal of like, um, people pleasing in my time. And sometimes it was, uh, because I did not feel my own worth. And sometimes it was because I thought I needed their validation or their appreciation to know that I was doing it well or right, that kind of thing. And I enjoy doing things for people, even when I don't get that, but like to know that I can appreciate myself, I can validate myself. That was kind of like super eye opening for me. And, um, as I let go of some of that people pleasing, like I, you know, there was an uncomfortable time where I had to do some more validation for myself, some more appreciation for myself, because you give yourself those thoughts. You also give yourself those thoughts when other people are saying things, you're making their words mean that you're validated or that you're appreciated. So instead of hoping someone would say those things for me or do those things or me finding ways to appreciate, uh, to do things for other people all the time, sometimes it was just creating that for myself. And then I was like, oh, I can do all these things. And Lana and I talked, the more you do of your own, like the more you take care of your sleep or your health or taking care of yourself, you have so much more to give to other people. So it's not that you have to stop doing for others. It's that the more you do for yourself, the more you have even abundantly to be able to give to other people. It just, they both rise up together. It's not an all or one. All right. So I'm going to uh, wrap this up. And so um, there is a worksheet that I created kind of for um, an end of the year review for everything. And so when I send the replay out of this video, uh, you'll get that worksheet with it too, to kind of do whatever you want. It kind of lets you um, take a moment to decide what all went well for the year, uh, what didn't and what you'd like to change that kind of stuff, like what, what some intention would be. So you're welcome to do that. Uh, the 30th is going to be when the doors close for, um, anyone who's wanting to join this round. Um, we won't have another round open up for a few months. Um, so if that's something you're interested in, and if you have any questions for me, go ahead and just email me. Um, it's all over the website. Coachingcara.com is places all over there to email or get a hold of me. And I would love to answer your questions. If you're trying to make a decision on if this is a right fit for you for coaching or not. So you guys all have a great day. See you next time. You too. Bye. Bye.